In this video, we're going to continue our discussion on the different types of problem solving by going over problems of transformation. In these problems, the person must carry out a sequence of transformations in order to complete a specified goal. In these types of problems, we have what is called an initial state, a goal state, and a problem space that describes all possible maneuvers. To better understand how these terms work, let's take a look at this example with the Tower of Hanoi. In this diagram, you can see how the Tower of Hanoi problem works. There are three pegs, A, B, and C. Initially, you have three rings on peg A, with the largest ring on the bottom and the smallest ring on the top. This represents our initial state. Our goal state is to have the same three rings on peg C. So now we know what the initial state is and what the goal state is. In order to get from the initial state to the goal state, we can move the rings. However, we can only move one ring at a time and we cannot place a larger ring on a smaller ring. These possible maneuvers that we can carry out represents the problem space. Okay, so now you should have a better understanding of these three terms and how they're applied to problems of transformation. And you can also take a look at the Tower of Hanoi problem and perhaps try to solve it yourself. In this video, we're not gonna show you the solution and that's because we're going to do that in a subsequent video where we show how you can use a particular approach to problem solving to solve this type of problem. All right, so now let's take a look at another example of a problem of transformation. This is the water jug problem, which is pretty famous. In this case, you're given a 37 cup jar, a 12 cup jar, and a five cup jar. These three jars are initially empty, but you can draw and discard water from these jars as many times as you want. And what you need to do is measure out exactly 10 cups of water. Now, this is a pretty interesting problem because none of the jars can hold exactly 10 cups of water. So you have to use the jars in some way to get exactly 10 cups. One way you can do this is by representing each jar as a letter that can help you to figure this out. So let's say we call the 37 cup jar A and we have the 12 cup jar which we'll call B and the five cup jar we'll call C. Now. Again, it's not that simple. You can't just say, oh, well, let me take the 12 cup jar, fill it with water and pour it into C. If you did that, you'd have seven cups of water left in B and five cups of water in C, which is not what we want. What you can do though, is you can start by filling A. So you have 37 cups of water in A. You pour it into B. That's gonna get rid of 12 cups of water, so that will leave you 25 cups of water in A. And then, if you pour in C, you can get rid of five cups of water. And if you do that three times, you can get rid of 15 cups of water. So we're gonna pour into C three times, and that will give us 10 cups of water. Essentially, we're doing 37 minus 12 and then minus five three times to give us the desired 10 cups of water. 